Welcome back to Real Milwaukee. Well, she is our registered dietitian, but today she's more of a myth buster. Yeah, Lisa Grudzalonic of YourTastyLife.com is here today to clear up five common nutrition myths. Thanks for coming in, yeah. Lisa. Hey, no problem. So, so you said that we will, after these myths are busted, we'll actually be able to eat more. Yeah, I really? think so. I think a lot of people are needlessly removing some foods from their diet. And let's start with this taboo subject of fat. Yes. So yes. if I have another person come into my office and tell me, I eat everything low fat. I don't even eat fat, I don't eat butter, I don't eat any of that stuff. You don't have to do that. So for years we have been told fat is bad, saturated fat and cholesterol are bad, and they yeah. increase our risk for heart disease. Right. That simply is a myth. It is not a scientific fact. Really? So well, that's what all the headlines say. I know, but this is what happens is there's a study that comes out and it gets grabbed and there's, this is going back decades ago where we had some bad science and it created some guidelines and since about 2010, that has very strongly been refuted by large meta-analysis. We're talking one in 2010 where it looked at 350,000 people, 21 different studies, and it found no significant evidence that saturated fat increases heart disease. Wow. So in other words, real butter, real cheese, you know, like a not a, not a cheese whiz we're talking, we're talking right. real cheese, Wisconsin cheese, you know, real cream, milk. real milk. Yeah. You can include these things into your diet and not be fearful of it, that it's going to cause heart disease because the science doesn't support that. And then pass yeah. over the cheese curd. Let's have a snack, right? <laughs> then the next thing we want to move on to okay. is we need to stop this nonsense of all calories are created equal. And all we need to do is restrict our calories to lose weight. Again, there's so much more to food than just calories. So it's not true to say if I have 1,200 calories in brownies a day, it's the same diet as 1,200 calories in almonds. Mm -hmm. Because the way the food is metabolized in your body makes all the difference if you're able to release weight or not. So we know that sugary foods like brownies cause a spike in insulin. Insulin is a fat storage hormone, so if I have a diet loaded with sugar, I don't care how many calories, you're really going to have a much harder time compared to a healthy whole food diet. Um, so you even with, eating. That might be more in calories. Exactly. So, oh. if, for example, like, like almonds, yeah. okay, a uh, serving of almonds, on a label it says 160 calories. We only metabolize about 120 calories because of the fiber and the fats and so forth in the almonds. Okay. So the way a food is composed and what it does inside to our hormones, our metabolism. So not all calories are created equal. Okay. It's like avocados are high in calories too. But yeah, but they're good fat that your you. body needs and it metabolizes that okay. much better. You're talking okay. I'm wah wah because I'm looking at this ice cream. Ice cream. Because okay. I, I work out. I work out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I think, hey, I can eat whatever I want because I'm balancing it out. Well, you can do it because you're two right, years sisters, old. So let's talk here. So <laughs> I work out for a half hour and lift weights. I burn 112 calories if I'm 155 pounds. If I'm 185 pounds, I grab, a, I burn 130 calories weightlifting. Okay. If I do some bicycles or aerobic, aerobic exercise for a half hour, 311 calories. Nice. And you're 185 pounds. Yeah. Well, let me see. If I have a measly half a scoop of this ice cream, 280 calories. So again, we just got oh, off of wow. calories aren't the only thing, right. but this myth of, oh, I worked out today, I can go home and have my ice cream, you blew your workout. You have to eat well and work out to gain the benefits. Okay. So, you know, this, <laughs> you know, eating cucumbers and tomatoes for a snack is nowhere near the same as obviously ice cream. No Point kidding. is you gotta work out well, but, <laughs> but eat, eat well, well too. All right. All right. Then we have this whole gluten-free frenzy. Oh, and let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay, <laughs> there is a lot of garbage out there. Can I just say that? There's oh, yeah, a lot of junk. It's a big fad right gluten -free now. Gluten-free food, okay. So, cookies and pretzels, nowhere did I ever see that they were health food. Did you guys ever see that? No. no. So, this is gluten-free food, which, okay, just because it's gluten-free doesn't mean I'm going to lose weight. If you have gluten intolerance or you have non-celiac gluten sensitivity, yes, there's a ton of people who have that and it's right. beneficial, but don't make the mistake of swapping out gluten foods for gluten-free junk foods. Okay. So I don't need more tapioca starch or more cane syrup, which is sugar, or more brown rice flour in my diet. These are just things that are loaded with gluten-free replacements that are less healthy than real whole gluten-free things like almond flour, coconut flour, or various bean flours. These are foods pulverized to make a flour, these are very highly processed products that definitely are not going to give processed. you more health. Right. So it's a little marketing. Okay, game. now you're making me nervous with the coffee over there because mm -hmm. I love my coffee. What are you going to say about coffee? We can yes. include coffee. No. Oh, so good. Okay. So for years we've been told coffee is bad. You know, we can't have it. Coffee is from a plant. And okay. with that being said, there's a lot of the same components, yeah. antioxidants and flavonoids that are in fruits and vegetables. 
So there's actually been a lot of research to support moderate consumption. One to three cups a day can help with our brain health, dementia, cognition, par uh, Parkinson's, <coughs> lower risk of diabetes, actually help with di uh, heart prevention because it has antioxidants in there. Okay. Now the difference is with coffee, some of us metabolize it well. I was going to say, doesn't it kind of go through your system? And some don't. So in other words, if I'm a slow metabolizer, I might be up for hours after a cup of coffee and okay. I could never have coffee in the evening. If you metabolize it well, I could say, I could have it before I go to sleep and it doesn't matter. Right. But there is definitely some health benefit okay. to coffee. So I feel yeah. better. Yeah, so we can have a little I enjoyment. Feel it's just there's a lot of unfortunate health myths that stick around for years that are not scientific facts and we hold on to that as something true and real and a lot of times they're just myths. They're well true. Lisa, you have set us straight. You have been our myth eat buster cheese. today. Eat cheese. <laughs> and drink coffee. There's more <laughs> from Milwaukee on the other side. Don't go away.